driftlessministry.org and you can access our bulletin there. Um, for our announcements for today, looking ahead, this Wednesday there's Bible with Bob at New Hope at 11. Next Saturday we have our grill out at Nelson's Agri Center from 10 to 1, so if you guys want a yummy lunch, please come out. There's all sign up in the back, so we're looking for volunteers, please sign up and we'll put you to work. <laughs> And of course, next Sunday, Pastor Carter is leading us in worship. We are so fortunate he, he and Alyssa are joining us for worship this morning, so welcome to both of you. And I also want to point out, in the farther future, New Hope is having a steak fry on Thursday, July 15th from 4.30 to 7. It was incorrectly stated that it was going to be at the DeSoto Community Center. It's at New Hope, so don't go to DeSoto for looking for steak. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? If not, will you please stand and join me in the greeting of the collective? God is good. All the time. All the time. God, God is good. good. And please join me in our centering thoughts. As we enter worship, we bring our burdens and worries, fears and anxieties, and place them at your feet. Free us for joyful obedience and bring us into closer fellowship with you. And please join me in our first hymn, number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
please join me in our opening prayer. O blessed Lord, our souls long to be free of the chains that try to tie us down. Reveal to us what holds us back from true freedom in you. Lead us to walk in faith and set us free. Amen. This week we are continuing to lift up Pastor Carter and Alyssa as you guys continue to settle into your new place. We hope you are enjoying your time here and we look forward to getting to know you in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Um, we continue to pray for Miss Marla and her fingers. How are you doing? Oh, well, I had a doctor's appointment on Wednesday, and he is very, very, very pleased. So that's good. You know, everything looked good, labs, everything. Um, I won't, won't have a CT in for, until 12 weeks. So, you know, he's happy, so I'm happy. And my fingers know better, but I'm just trying to learn to play with numb fingers. You are such a blessing. Well, I don't know about that. Sing loud. <laughs> Sing loud. And if anybody else can do this, step forward. <laughs> John, how is Ron doing? Uh, about the same. About the same? Yep. We will continue to lift him up. Any update on how Hunter is doing, Angie? So we went and had his orthopedic surgery appointment, and they put him in a boot. So he's got a no pass anymore. Woo. He didn't fracture it on the growth plate. In the other churches, where we continue to lift up Miss Gloria and Marion, and Ryan Stalsberg and Dale Long at New Hope, and at Liberty Pole, Jeff Matson and Jack Cochiola. Are there any other prayers or concerns, joys, that need to be lifted up today? All right. If not, let's have a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, you created everything around us, the trees, the grass, the beautiful blue sky and the sun, even farther out into the entire universe. We know that it, it all sits in your hands and you control it all. We come to you today with so much on our hearts. We continue to lift up Miss Marla and her fingers and Ron and his health situation. We ask that you look over the entire Isabel family as they have had a rough week. Watch over Ryan and Hunter and Ryan's father. We also ask that you continue to guide those concerns in our heart. Reveal to us who needs your loving presence. And we lift up all those that we have not spoken today. You know what's on our hearts and minds. We lift them up to you and we release them into your loving care. Lord, you taught us so much and you taught us how to love each other and you also showed us how to love each other. And we thank you for that. As we head forward this week, continue to be with us and teach us and guide us. 
And we lift this all up in your name as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would the kids like to come forward? If not, you guys can stay back there. It's understandable. <laughs> oh, they're coming. Okay. So, do you guys ever go grocery shopping with your parents? Uh, yeah. All right. So, you see that lady up there on the screen? She's struggling to carry in those groceries. How do you think she's going to open up the door when she gets to her house? By her kids. By her kids. Okay. Is there anything else her kids could do to help her? Grab the groceries. Grab, ooh, that's a good one. So, if you guys see somebody struggling like this, do you guys think you could help them as well? Yeah. Even if they're not your parents, maybe your brother or your sister. Even this morning, Miss Marla asked if she could help me carry in the stuff that I was carrying. Luckily, I still had a free hand, but if my other hand was full, I gladly would have accepted help. So, if you guys see anybody struggling... And if you guys need help, don't be afraid to ask for help. Everybody can help you. Anybody in this church is here to help you. And don't be afraid to help others. So, can we have a little moment of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for these wonderful children and their, their enthusiasm and love for everyone around them. Show them how they can help their family members, their friends, and everyone they encounter. Help them to ease the burdens that other people carry. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. <laughs> With that, will you guys please join me in our second hymn, number 600, Wonderful Words of Life.
be seated. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14, through chapter 8, verse 4. It's a little bit longer, and it's a bit of a tongue twister, so hopefully I can get through this without messing up. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for I want for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Christ Jesus our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So across our nation today, countless people are celebrating our Independence Day. I know my family will be gathering later this afternoon but there will be festivals and parades, long-awaited gatherings with family and friends, delicious food, and of course, spectacular fireworks displays from sea to shining sea. It's a day all about celebrating our freedom, something that is almost synonymous when people hear the word America. But just how free are we? There are five basic freedoms that we as Americans enjoy that are guaranteed through the First Amendment of our Constitution. Pop quiz time, can you name them? Speech, religion, press, peaceful assembly, and the right to petition the government. Together, these five freedoms are the core of what make the people of the United States the freest in the world. However, like many others around our world, so many people in our own nation are still seeking freedom, freedom of a different kind. A kind of freedom that no government or even the strongest military can provide. Consider each of the things that weigh down our hearts and our lives. Death, loss, illness, worry, unforgiveness, grief, guilt, shame. The list goes on and on. We deal with so much. Each of these is a weight that we carry on our shoulders. Many of these burdens are inevitable and out of our control, unfortunately, like a financial hardship or a global pandemic. However, others we, we hold on to like a precious gem, and we choose to carry that, carry that weight throughout our entire lives. Regardless of their origin, we carry them, each one of us, on a daily basis. It's no wonder that in a recent survey by the American Psychological Association, 80% of those polled reported emotions associated with prolonged stress. Stress brought on by these burdens that we all face at one time or another. Life 
is not easy. You know that, I know that. It was never promised to be easy, even for Christians. Jesus even told us himself to expect trials and tribulations. And frankly, even though all of our new technology seems to make life easier, it can also make it a bit more stressful because it's another window through which burdens can reach you. So with all that weight and the burdens that each of us already carry in life, why would we ever choose to intentionally carry them or even carry more? And how can we ease the load that we already carry? Now, as I was thinking about the scripture reading that I had picked for today and how it applies to freedom, I had a bit of a flashback. A flashback to my high school days. He gads. If you had walked into my high school and tried to spot me in the halls, it would not have been hard. And not just because of my height. I was that oddball kid who carried just about the entire contents of his locker in his backpack. Through the halls I would walk, massive backpack on my back from class to class. Now I realize that our youth today cannot do this for security reasons, but it was fully acceptable in my day. And I was often asked why I carried everything with me. Some thought it was pure foolishness, and looking back, I would agree with them. <laughs> Others thought that I was actually using it as a tool to get stronger through weightlifting. Nice idea, but no. <laughs> to be honest, I simply hated having to mess with that combination lock every time I needed something. For me, it was just easier to carry everything. Anyways, with this massive weight on my shoulders, it really limited what I could do. If I wanted to fully interact with my classmates, that backpack would have to come off. However, there was one class that would set me free from this burden. One class that I didn't have to take that massive backpack with me. I was allowed to run free from the weight of all those books and supplies. It was gym class. <laughs> Everybody's favorite. Gym class didn't require any books, just a change of clothes. We would run, play, and learn about all different types of sports, many of which I am still not very good at. But can you imagine me trying to play any sport with that massive, fully loaded backpack on? Needless to say, I wouldn't jump very high, and I wouldn't be very fast. But without that burden on my back, once I was set free from that weight, I could tap into my full potential. I could really dig down deep and work with my teammates to achieve our goal. Now, just like me in high school, so many of us walk through life with some sort of a burden. But this time, the burden is not a backpack full of books. At least, I hope it's not. We're all carrying something. Something we may be struggling to let go of. Something that is limiting our full potential. Every one of us on this planet is walking through this world, seeking freedom from our burdens. So who can save us? Who can set us truly free so we can reach our full potential? Thankfully, we don't have to look very far. It's right here in the Bible. In today's scripture reading, we find Paul telling the church in Rome about this battle taking place within his body. A battle between truth. A battle between trying to do what he wants to do and what he hates to do. Really, a battle between good and evil. Paul identifies the source of the conflict, the law of sin and death. You see, all of the burdens we face, all of these hardships that hold us down, they're tools used by our enemy. They are shackles that keep us as slaves to the law of sin and death. They limit our potential, stifle our growth, and possibly even cause us to drift away from our relationship with God. But then Paul reveals the chain breaker. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. God sent his Son to free us from the power of sin from the power of all the burdens that weigh us down. But we need to let them go. The past two Sundays, we've heard all about the momentum that our churches currently have. Our three churches have really picked up steam, even in the face of a global pandemic, and we are getting the message of Christ out there. 
and we are, we're encouraged to keep on going, to keep building on the foundations that we have laid. And I know we all look forward to the energy and ideas that Pastor Carter and Alyssa may bring to our churches as we move forward in ministry together. However, in order to reach our full potential, we need to take a moment and look within ourselves, both the church as a whole and individually. What burden is holding us back? What is it that we are unwilling to let go of that is keeping us from reaching our full potential? Once we identify what is weighing us down, we need to let it go. I realize that this can be quite hard, and your church family is here to help you. So you don't have to do it alone. Reach out. Talk to others. We're here to help. In order to find peace and resume our growth, we need to give anything that is weighing us down over to Christ. In Matthew 11, our Lord tells us, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So come to Christ with your burdens. Lean on your church family for strength in times of trials. Like my fully loaded backpack, we need to unload what is weighing us down. Give it to God so that we can run free and reach our full potential. So I implore you, if you take anything from what I'm talking today, whatever is weighing you down, whatever is holding you back, whatever is limiting your growth and stifling your relationship with God, let it go. Give it to Jesus so you can be set free. Because as Jesus himself stated in John 8:36. If the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Let us pray. Father, no matter what burden we are carrying, we can trust that you will not only listen, but that you will also be faithful and righteous as you answer. Sometimes our burdens are heavy and difficult as we lay them at your feet. Other times we may not even be able to speak, but only utter pleas that have no words. Please give us courage and strength during these, these times so that we are able to lay down the burdens and walk away knowing that you will handle it as you have promised. Set us free, Lord, and help us be the people you have called us to be. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. At this time, we will receive our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Will our ushers please come forward? And would one of the kids like to come forward for the Sunday School Bank? Please rise.
God of grace, we hear your call to generous giving in the way you meet our needs each day and in the peace you give which passes understanding. Having received so much, we offer all we have, our time, talents, and money for your kingdom. Bless these gifts for the work of your church. Amen. And please join me in our closing hymn, Freely, Freely, number 389 in the hymn. benediction, our traditional benediction. God.